Yes. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> you dork, I love you. Um, this is part one of hey. my... I love you. Of my August wrap-up. I'm going to be doing my August wrap-ups the way I said in June I was going to start doing them, and then I quit filming for a while, where I do one, like, on the weekly so that I can show you the books and still be able to return my library books in a timely manner. Um, so I'm just going to dig right into this because I just filmed another video that ended up being kind of long. And it's actually about the first book, which is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Um, this is... No. I gave this three stars. You can watch my review, which should already be up if you want to hear more of my opinions about it. Um, basically, it was not what I thought it was when I went into it. And everybody was a jerk, and it made me act mean to my husband. So, because yeah, I got in their you're, mindset. You're pretty me. mean. Um, so, yeah, that's it. If you want to hear more about it, go check out my review on it. I, um, I've had this for a while. I meant to read it, but I finally picked it up because it was the book of the month for July for the Classics Click Book Club, which I am technically a member of on Goodreads. It's not my book club. I think Roya Eve Reads on YouTube is the one who does that, so check that out if you're interested in it. So, finished it the 2nd of August. I was a little late, but I got there. Okay, the next book I read, and sorry about the band, but I can't take that off because it's an out-of-system thing, um, was Chew, Volume 5, Major League by John Lehman and Rob Guillory. I have my good read for my song. Get it? It's called Major League Chew. <laughs> um, I gave this one five stars. I love this series. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it. You guys have probably heard me talk about it for the four previous volumes. Um, but it's, there was an avian flu. Oh, yes, she's adorable. She's spilling it everywhere. There was an avian flu, and so chicken and eggs and all of that is, like, illegal now. And there, the main character is a sebopath, which means he can eat something and know everything about its history. Um, if that sounds remotely interesting or you like food, it's really good. I highly recommend it. I'm not doing it justice. Um, the art looks like this. Um, and yeah, I love this series. Like I said, you guys have heard me talk about it many times. Well, four other times at least. Um, the next book I read... Now this is a fairly big, like, this is compared to my head. This is a fairly decent sized book. It's only like 350 pages long, and, and it's she, got a lot of pictures. She's got a big head, too, so. But this is Rejected Princesses, Tales of History's Boldest Heroines, Hellions, and Heretics by Jason Porath. I gave it four stars. Um, it's, his, it's a nonfiction about basically what it says on the tin. It was really good. I liked reading it. I didn't have a problem with the writing style or anything, but something about it just dragged, and it took me forever to get through this thing. Like, forever. Um, it does have pictures for a lot of them that are really cool, and it tells you, like, um, art notes. It has, like, trivia and things that tie back into the story, which is really neat, and I like how it's done like a storybook. Um, because it's done like a storybook, even though it's an adult book, they have, a uh, a maturity rating and then they also have like different possible triggers before you start each story which if you are reading it to kids I find to be very helpful and interesting um, overall it was a good book it was just dragged and I don't know why um, I read Alex some of the entries from it so what did you think of it the ones I read it's definitely one of those modern styles of like edgy or whatever like this to deal with the baby and uh child you can put her on my lap it was good for what it was it was well researched there were some things that were left out that i wish hadn't been on some of them but it was good for what it is okay it's still recording right yes okay the next book was um look she's gotten bigger we keep feeding her and she just keeps getting bigger i don't know what we're doing wrong if you haven't met her already, this is my youngest daughter. She's almost nine months, and her name is River. Um, so the next book I read was El Defo by C.C. Bell and David Lasky. 
I gave this four stars. It's a graphic novel. I really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's about this girl who gets meningitis when she's four and she loses most of her hearing. So she has to have <coughs> hearing aids going to school and learn to lip read and stuff like that. Um, I picked this up because I've been wanting to read it anyway, and a lot of people have been talking about it on BookTube, but I picked it up specifically this month because I'm starting school in a few weeks, and the program I'm doing is sign language interpretation, so I thought it would be cool to read this, and another book that I haven't gotten to yet, River Elizabeth. She's a bit low file. Um, the Just art looks like, like this, which I thought was pretty cute. I would say this is great for adults, but I'd also say it's appropriate for kids. Um... I really enjoyed this. I learned things, um, and I think it will, one of the classes I'm taking this fall is a deaf culture, I think is what it's called, class, and I think after, having read this before that class is helpful. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. Then I read three little novellas, but they came as an ebook bind up, so I'm going to tell you what all of them are. And then I'll show you, like, the thing. She's got your book. Just don't eat it. Um, short stories from Hogwarts of heroism, hardship, and dangerous hobbies. Short stories from Hogwarts of power, politics, and pesky poltergeist. Um, both of those are by J.K. Rowling and Mina Lima. And then Hogwarts, an incomplete and unreliable guide. That one's just by J.K. Rowling. So, I can do this. I did the thing, right? Oh, come on, load. Ah, there we go. So they were all in this little ebook bind up that I got from an app that my library uses. Called? Cloud Library. Cloud Yes, that's okay. accurate. Um, I thought it was Hoopla. I also have Hoopla, but which our library uses, but our entire system uses this Cloud Library, and I had to download it just for this book thing because it wasn't on Hoopla. It wasn't in system as a paperback or anything. Or like a hard copy. Do they have audio books? On cloud? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I haven't explored it very thoroughly. Um, you didn't even tell me about this thing. Yeah, I did. I must have been asleep. I'll tell you more about it when we get done filming. But yeah, they were in this little Pottermore Presents um, Hogwarts collection bind up. So I read those. I gave all three of them three stars. They were really interesting. I enjoyed them a lot. The reason they didn't get a higher rating is because, one, I haven't finished reading the Harry Potter series yet. And two, um, the books I have read, I like them, but I'm not as nuts about them as most people are. So if you are Harry Potter nuts, you'd probably give them four to five stars. I can see them getting four stars if you're really, really into Harry Potter. Um, I don't quite see them getting five stars, and I don't have a reason for that. That's just how I felt about them. Yes, there's a book on my phone. Here it comes. And then the last thing that I read was another out of system called The Intern by John S. Daniels. Um, I just finished this a while ago, actually, and I gave this four stars. Um, so I do the book club with my local library, and I'm like the youngest person there. It's a lot of um, mm, middle aged to older ladies. Middle aged to older ladies, yeah. Um, and one of them had mentioned this book that her doctor wrote, and she read it, and she was kind of, like, not sure about it, how she felt about it. And we were looking up on Goodreads, and I read the description in kind of, like, a funny tone of voice. It was a lot of fun and everything, so I was curious about it, so I ordered it out of system. And I got it, and I was expecting it to be, like, a self-published or small publisher, mushy book, total junk food, nothing really of substance, but I actually really enjoyed this. I can understand why some people would have issues it, with it, because for one, um, yes, it's a mushy book with a gay main character, and he obviously falls for a guy. It's fine. She can have it. Um, so I understand that could be problematic with some people. The other thing that I think a lot of people would have problems with is it's set in a medical setting. And there's a lot of technical jargon, and because he's, him, both of the guys are doctors, and they, one's in an internship in a hospital, the other one's a residency in the hospital, they have a lot of time that they spend in the hospital. So there's a lot of talk about that. So if that's not interesting to you, I can understand why this wouldn't be interesting. But I really like this. It was not amazingly written, but it was 
way better written than a lot of mushy books that I read. Like, it was, um, better than, like, Harlequin or Love Inspired type books. Um, it does have sex scenes in it, which might be problematic for other people that don't like to read that stuff. Um, the one thing I'll say about those that I liked was some books that have those, um, don't do anything. They, like, oh, they had sex and that's it. Okay, cool. Um, some books go way in depth. And this was, like, right in the middle, which was nice. Um. She really wants that Rejected Princesses uh, book. Yeah. Um, if you eat the ad system, Joel will kill me. Um. Can't you hold it? Oh, yeah, chew. <laughs> she wants to chew on you. Um, so there's that. There were a couple slight writing glitches where there was, like, an endotracheal <laughs> tube in this one that he had used in the beginning of the book. She's a Siva path. <laughs> and, um, that was fine. The word doesn't bother me. I don't have a problem saying it or reading it. But he said that it was an endotracheal tube in like three paragraphs in a row. And I'm like, okay, I got it. I know. Can we just call it a tube or a trach or a trach tube or something at this point? And then there was a couple of times, the main character's name is Jason. And there was a couple of times um, where he would say, he would ha talk about the main character in three successive sentences and say Jason, so on, and Jason, and, so and calling him by his first name for each one. And it didn't happen all the time, just sometimes that was kind of annoying. Suffering from a lack of pronouns. Yeah. But overall, it was quite well written. I enjoyed the story. Um, I personally enjoyed the medical jargon. Um, but that's me. I'm a research geek with health issues coming from a medical background. So, um, yeah, the, um, what else was I going to say? Oh, there's also a small, like, it's not even really enough to call it a mystery aspect. But if you read a little, lot of mystery novels, you'll see some bits coming together that ends in this other thing that was actually really interesting to me. And I enjoyed that as well. And I, like, I called it. And I'm, like, practically yelling at the book, but uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to reading the second book, which I also have to order out of system. But hopefully they'll be able to get it. And, yeah, if this sounds really interesting, I would definitely recommend it because it was quite good. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's everything. <sighs> that's everything I've read so far this month. I'm going to put this little crazy frog to bed. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or opinions about any of the books I mentioned, put them in the comments. I would love to talk to you guys about them. Um, if you're curious on the massive TBR I plan to be reading this month, that video should be up already. That's a large portion of it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Say bye, River! Say bye! She's not paying attention. <laughs>